Hello traders, this is Sasha Gogolin at secondskiesforex.com. Welcome back to another lesson in our Learn How to Trade with Price Action and Order Flow course. In this lesson you'll learn more about different chart types used when trading, uh, the most popular ones. We, in particular we will be talking about candlesticks charts and candlesticks, how they form and what they look like. And towards the end of the lesson, we will also have a look at the unit of measure when we are referring to and talking about moves in the Forex market. So let's get started. First out is the most basic chart form, which is a line chart. I'm pretty sure you have seen this in, in various economic newspapers and TV shows. And it's the most basic chart form used and is created by joining a series of closing prices together. It's a very simple representation of historical price action. Um, it's not really suitable for trading as it's not showing critical information uh, most traders need or want to see. So it's, its best use is to view historical price action. So let's move on to the next. The next one in line here is the open, high, low and close chart, also called the bar chart. It's made up of vertical bars showing the price range of the applicable time frame. So each bar here, each vertical bar in this chart represents one day of price action simply because it's a one day, a daily euro US dollar chart. This chart is, is especially good for aftermarket analysis of historical data. And if we look at what, what these bars represent, um, so first of all, you have the vertical line in the middle which represents the, the, the entire price movement during that day because it's a daily chart. And to the left you have these, and to the right you have these horizontal ticks. And the, the left tick is the opening price of that particular day. And to the right is the closing price, which means price opened here for the day, price moved within this price range during the day, and then price closed here to the right. So, so this, this bar is best used for aftermarket analysis, but there's actually one chart that has, one chart type that has become uh, more popular over the years. And this is the next one we will look at. This chart is called a candlestick chart. Similar to the open, high, low and close chart, it consists of, of bars like this, uh, but they are just simply called candlesticks. And candlestick charts are thought to have been developed in the 18th century by a Japanese rice trader. And they have become very popular over the last years. Um, so this is the majority of charts you will, you will most likely see out there. Uh, compared to the open, high, low, close charts, the candlesticks, when they form, uh, they visually better show the live price action movements by expanding and contracting the candlestick's body, which is this, this filled out rectangle in the middle that you see here on each bar. Um, let's have a look at this in, in more detail. So this in the middle here is called the candlestick's body. So when price uh, action movements uh, are going up and down when price moves up and price moves down this body of, of the candlestick is, is expanding and contracting which is very easy to to grasp and and uh, a very good visual representation of the price movement so let's move on and have a look at candlesticks in in greater detail similar to a bar on the open high low close chart the candlestick, the bottom of the body here of the candlestick is showing the opening price. So the low part here of this body shown in, in uh, on the screen is where this particular candle opened. The, the absolute low of this candle down here, the wick, the lower wick and the upper wick here show the extremes of the price movements within that particular time frame. So if this is a daily candle on a daily chart, this means from the low here at the bottom to the high here, the top of the wick up here, this was the entire price movement that happened during this particular day. If it was a one hour chart and this candlestick would represent one hour of price action, it would encompass all the price action and the price movement within that particular hour. And then <clears throat> this candle closes 
up here. When the body closes, um, when, the, when the candle closes, the body forms and this candle is complete. So we have the opening, the price range showing by the upper and lower wick and the upper part of the body is the closing price. And this is applicable to a bullish candle. When price within this particular time frame, let's say it's a day, it moved up. So it, it, it closed higher than it opened. It means this is a bullish bar. Price advanced within this time frame. Well, let's say it's a daily chart. So within that day, price advanced. So it opened down here, closed up here. Now, the opposite is true for a bearish candle. So you have the opening price here, you have the price range illustrated by the top and the bottom wick. So price moved within this price range during the day and then it closed lower than it opened. Which means within this day, within this candle, price moved down, right? So it opened up here, it moved in between the top here and the lower wick here and then it closed lower than it opened. And this simply means during this time frame, let's say it's a daily chart, during this day of price action, price declined in the particular instrument. So to summarize, the candlestick, this middle part, this rectangle, this filled rectangle is called the body. And the upper part sticking out here, the spikes, is called the upper wick and the lower wick. And these candlesticks can show up in any different sh different shape uh, shape and size. And it completely depends on what price did within that particular time frame. So it could be a daily chart, it could be four hour chart, it could be one hour chart. And if this was a one minute chart, each candlestick here would represent a minute. So it's completely dependent upon what kind of time frame you are looking at. Now let's move on to the unit of measure. When talking about unit of measure used in currency trading, um, we're not using the same terminology used in, for example, stocks. As you might know, when talking about stocks, it's often easy to refer to movements uh, in terms of percentage, in dollars, in cents, or depending on your local currency. Um, but when talking about movements in currency pairs, uh, they are often very small in terms of percentage. So a particular currency can move up and day, up and down in a day, for example, 0.001%. So it's not really effective to talk about the movements in currency pairs in terms of percentage. Because of this, most major currency pairs, instead of just one or two decimal places, they have four, which is the most common number of decimal places. Uh, some brokers also have five, but the most common is four decimal places. In this example, 1.3250. So when we look in the change in the fourth decimal point, when price moves either up or down, this is called a pip. And PIP stands for point in percentage. When it comes to brokers that have five decimal points and you have a change in the fifth, that's called a tick. But the absolutely most common one is called a PIP. So when you talk about a, a bullish move, for example, in a currency, you talk about the pair moved up 40 pips or the pair moved down 50 pips. Let's have a visual uh, look at the visual example of this. So let's say, for example, the euro US dollar is trading at 1.3500 and it moves up to 1.3505. That equals an increase, a bullish move of five pips. Now let's say it's trading at 1.3530 and it sells off. It moves down to 1.3515. That equals a decline or a sell off of minus 15 pips. So a move of 15 pips. In a chart, this would look like this. So here you have a chart of a four hour euro used dollar. Price is there currently at 1.1250. It moves up to 1.1300. That's an increase of plus 50 pips. So plus 0.005. 
<clears throat> one exception to what we meant what I mentioned in the previous slide that most currency major currency pairs have four decimal points are yen pairs yen pairs have only two decimal points so that's that's uh, the only exception to this rule which are yen pairs so two decimal points instead of four or five to give you an example here you have the euro the, sorry the US dollar versus Japanese yen it's trading at 110.75 it moves for example up to 111.25 that's an increase in 0.5 which also equals 50 pips this brings us to the end of this presentation. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and in the next one we are going to talk about the different charting time frames which are the most commonly used and how to relate to them and how to use them efficiently. So with that being said, I'm looking forward to see you in the next lesson.